Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again, ready to serve you with a new segment. We had the POP, the process or problem, or the problem or the process. I think it was a dope ass segment. I got a lot of love on that. You can bet your bottom dollar your boy's bringing that back next season. But I got a little something, something new. A little something, a little small segment. It is the state of the AFC East. We could talk about the Bills all day. We know the Bills. But do we know our neighbors? Do we know our neighbors from the East? I mean, do we draft for them? Do we bring in free agencies for them? You're damn right. We, at least, in my opinion, that's what we should do. And I think that's what we've been doing. You want to win the division? You got to know your opponents in your division. And you've got to draft to be the best. So you've got to draft for a guy like Tom Brady. You've got to draft for a defense like the Jets that are fast and aggressive. You've got to draft for the Dolphins receivers. You need corners that can stay with Kenny Stills. Corners that can stay with Parker. That can body him up. You guys already know what it is. Now, without further ado, we are going to talk about the damn Dolphins. The fish. You know what I'm saying? The fish fillet. You feel me? You know what I mean? The, uh, what kind of other fish? You, you want the salmon. You want, you, you name it, we got it. And that's the Dolphins. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the Dolphins. What do we need to know about the Dolphins? You feel me? Are we supposed to be shook? Should we be afraid? Should we be kind of looking over our shoulder for the Dolphins? I think we do. I don't think this is going to be last year. I think, A, they got their quarterback back. They got Ryan Tannehill back from the ACL surgery. He looks pretty good in camp from what I'm hearing from some of the people that I talked to. And you got Brock Osweiler. Now, people are going to laugh and kiki ki, ki about Brock Osweiler. But let's, let's, let's keep it real. Brock had his best season, had his best uh, performances with his head coach, Adam Gase. At the time, his offensive coordinator. Really and truly... I think there's going to be a sense of new confidence in the Dolphins because they've got their main man back. And if your main man goes down and is not ready, you've got a quarterback that has played under Adam Gase already and can jump right in and start making plays, which I heard he's starting to do in camp. Now, let's stay specifically with the offense. The running backs are a squad that you got to pay attention. you got the vet, the hard-nosed vet in Frank Gore. You've got the rookie in Ballage. And then you got Kenyon Drake. Drake can play, man. Drake, you know what I mean? The boy can ball. The boy is compact. He can hit in between the tackles. He can go out to the tackles. The boy has got speed. So that's one running back that you've got to pay attention to. Yes, they got rid of the J train. They did. But Kenyon Drake can ball. And that guy gave us fits catching the ball out of the backfield, hitting inside, going outside. He's one to be reckoned with. So pair him with Frank Gore, hitting inside the tackles, Ballage that can catch the ball out of the backfield. That's a pretty dangerous backfield in Miami. Then you got Kenny Stills that can run your 4-3. You know what I'm saying? Then you got Parker that's got to come with it this year. Now, are we to be afraid of that? You know what I'm saying? Can we bottle him up? You're damn right we can. But we still can't sleep on the Dolphins because they brought in a Gaseki. You know what I'm saying? Tied in from Penn State. That ran, what, a 4-4, 4-5 in the 40? So it's something to reckon with. This offense is definitely not the same with Jay Cutler. They're going to take their chances downfield. And you've got a mobile quarterback in Ryan Tannehill that still can make plays with his legs. Offensive line is something that has definitely improved. You've got, you got Tunsil to the left, Sutton on the left side as well. So it's going to be a formidable left side. Your center in Kilgore that's going to be, you know what I mean, just a run of the mill, just whatever. And then you got James at right tackle and Jesse Davis that can come in and, you know what I mean, do all right. So the Dolphins are primed, man. The Dolphins are primed to get back to the playoffs because they missed out because your boys in Buffalo decided to take the spot and represent and break the drought. Look for the Dolphins to not allow us to do what we did to them last year, and that's pretty much take over the defense and, and take over their offense. I mean, we, we, we dominate. It's simple and it's fair, and I love rubbing it in every and each and one of my Dolphins fans' faces and the people that comment in our section. Bump y'all. So... The one side of the ball, though, that has actually made some strides, um, even though they lost in Dominican Sioux, is the defensive line, linebacking crew, and the DBs. Now, check this out. You've got Robert Quinn, in addition, that led the league along with Cameron Wake since 2012 in strip sacks. So you know they're going to be getting after the quarterback, and we've got to do everything we can to stay at bay, protect whoever is throwing the ball in Peterman, in McCarron, 
or the franchise Josh Allen. Who knows he's going to be quarterback, but either one has got to be protected. And you know the Dolphins are going to be sending their guys downstream to try to get one of our guys. Now, linebacking crew is a little soft. You got Kiko Alonso that is injury prone, but when he's on the field and he's heavy and he's ready to roll, the boy can make plays and he's instinctual. Then you've got Raekwon, the chef, McMillan, and then they brought in a Jerome Baker that's going to be really there to cover receivers and tight ends so look for him not to be stopping the run or any of that nature but he's gonna be covered he's gonna be downfield so if we think we can pull a fast one we gotta make sure that we know where we're hitting on the field because if he's around you know he's gonna be defending and playing well on the ball now get back to defense safeties are where it's going to be a challenge to go downfield i mean i can tell you right now the Dolphins prepared for what's coming to them in the AFC East. Quarterbacks galore. We brought in quarterbacks to the Jets, the Bills, and you got Tom Brady. So you've got to be able to cover. So TJ McDonald, hard-hitting, fast safety that's going to be in the box all day, every day. So we've got to be able to shore up that run and left, right, and move McCoy wherever we see fit, which we did last year. But you know they're going to be trying to stop that all day cornerback xavier howard came on strong the last five games only allowing 50 yards passing and shutting shit down so you know the dolphins are gonna be ready for our guys you know you got you already got rashad jones that's gonna be shutting down the center field but the one guy that they drafted we didn't think they were gonna draft was fitzpatrick minka fitzpatrick the guy's just a football player and the fact is, they're going to be stacking that box with TJ McDonald and Rashad. And they're going to probably let my man Minka roam the field and make plays. So, we've got to be all over it. We've got to know who is where, set them up, break them down, and don't let the Dolphins say they can come in to Buffalo and try to run things because they're not going to. That's a team that we got to pay attention to because they're not trash, man. They did. They definitely improved. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's going to be quarterback play that does it. Is Ryan Tannehill ready to lead? This is going to be his third year under Adam Gase. And typically, third-year players under one head coach or one offensive coordinator in their third year should be able to improve vastly. Now, he's coming off an injury, so that makes the difference. So we are looking forward to facing the Dolphins. Are they as impactful as we think? Are they going to be as good as we think? Are the Bills are as improved? Is our run game going to be able to support uh, our passing game? I think we will. We lost Richie Incognito. We brought in Wyatt Teller, six foot five, three hundred seventeen pounds. So we got some girth. So we're gonna have to be able to run the ball, kill the clock, pick apart the Dolphins. You know what I'm saying? We've got guys that are not shy to throw the ball, so we will be throwing the ball. Dolphins, don't think that you're just going to sit put and you think that we're going to throw for 100 yards a game. You best believe we're going to throw for way more than that. So, are the Dolphins ready for us? Are we going to match up well against them? I feel that we have the advantage over them because of where we came from, the improvements we made on defense, because the defense, I feel, is going to lay lumber all year long. Trent Edmonds is our guy in the middle. You got Harrison Phillips, the snack man. He's going to be snacking all year. Kyle Williams in his last year, you know he's going to make it count. So this could be interesting. Our defense is going to hold it down. We shut down my man Tannehill, make them become a one-dimensional team, and we got this. We let him get, get comfortable, start slinging the rock all over the place, getting confidence back under Adam Gase. We might have a problem. They're going to challenge us, but I think we got the edge. Comment below. Let me know what you think. I really hope I got some Dolphins fans in here. Your running backs are dope. I, I respect the running back crew. The, the, the receiving crew, you lost Landry, but you picked up Amendola. So we'll see how well you got. You got Joaquin Grant. That's pretty nice as well. So we'll see what the Dolphins are about. If you guys disagree with what I'm saying, let me know. If you guys agree, I'm spot on with how we're going to receive the Dolphins. If the Dolphins are as nice as I think they are, we just got to let it play out. At the end of the day, it comes down to chemistry, and your boy Tannehill is your X Factor. If you guys like this video, smash the like button, comment below. If you think I'm talking shit, let me know. It's your boy, and I'm gone.